one-point game. Mitchell for three. Oh, Unbelievable. Oh, 42 bye and bye. a half. Here we go. Bye bye. 70 points for Devin Booker. High dribble into the lane, running right-hander up and in. Takes 71 points. Embiid coast to coast for 70. Lucas splits a double. Keeps the dribble alive. All the way to the hoop. Scoop to the hoop for the foul. Point yeah. 71 and 72. They say anything negative, cause they just wanna hear it out your mouth, yeah. Here's the truth, individual scoring performances in the NBA aren't very meaningful, because the point of basketball is to win the game. So the amount of points that an individual scores in that game is secondary to the bigger goal, which is to win. So I'm sorry, even if you scored over 70 points, it doesn't matter. It's meaningless unless your team won. That's terrible. Having said that though, there are some historic NBA individual scoring performances that cannot be ignored. At the top of all of them sits Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point record, where in a game he scored 100 points on the nose. But in this video, I'm going to prove to you that Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game is completely overrated and that other players have performed better than he has in NBA history. Rosen now has 35 points. Mitchell inside, his floater doesn't go. He gets it back, puts it up and in. Donovan Mitchell has 50 points. One of the first things we need to recognize when we're talking about points per game is the flaws that this statistic has, especially when we're comparing it season to season. Because the NBA changes rules every single year, including defensive rules, the shot clock, and how it resets, and all of this impacts the pace of the game. Some seasons and some eras of the NBA had a lot more scoring occurring than others. If you look at the modern NBA, the late 1990s was actually a low point for scoring in the league, and today's game is a high point for scoring in the league. In other words, in today's NBA, we're seeing point inflation. There's way more players who are able to score because the scoring is up across the board. Oh, 42 bye and bye. a half. Here we go. Bye bye. Unbelievable. So now he broke your thing. So we need to take that into consideration when we're talking about points scored in a game. And unfortunately for Will Chamberlain, his 100 point game came in an era where the NBA was scoring a lot per game. The pace was insane. If we're just going to straight up compare the scoring from one player to another, it doesn't make sense without understanding this points per game inflation. And since we already established that the whole point of basketball is to win a game, something that I think is a more credible way to compare points scored in a game across eras is to look at the percentage of impact that that player had in scoring in that particular game. For example, scoring 100 points in a game where a thousand points were scored isn't very impressive. However, scoring 50 points in a game where only 150 points were scored is crazy impressive. If we calculate the percentage of points contributed by a player in all of the highest scoring NBA games by a single player in NBA history, we find something very, very interesting. Check out this plot. Most of the highest scoring games in NBA history happen somewhere between 20% and 31%, with a few that stand out at the top. At number 5 down here is Wilt Chamberlain, who on March 2nd, 1962, scored 100 points. Fourth right here is Joe Folks who in 1949 scored 63 points. Number three here is David Robinson, who scored 71 in 1994. Number two is George Mikan, who scored 61 in 1952. And at the top, the very tippy top above everyone else, is Kobe Bryant, who scored 81 points on January 22nd, 2006. And the reason he's on top is because his percentage sits at a whopping 35.8%, clearly above everyone else's. For context, Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game only was less than 32% of all of the scoring in that game. So with this adjustment for point inflation by looking at the percentage that that player contributed to scoring within that game, we clearly see that Kobe Bryant had the best game and single scoring performance in NBA history. Not only did he win the game, but his scoring performance percentage wise is the highest percentage of points scored in NBA history for a single game by a single player. Kobe's got 44. Kobe again, yes sir! And at this point you might be thinking, holy cow. If Kobe Bryant played in today's day and age, how many points per game would he score? Well, guess what? We can use the same logic to get an estimate. Because in the 2006 
NBA season, Kobe Bryant was averaging 35.4 points per game. And if we take that as a percentage of the total number of points that were being scored on average in games in the NBA in 2006, and apply that percentage to the average amount of points being scored in the NBA in today's game, we find that Kobe Bryant in today's game would have averaged 41.7 points per game. Holy basketballs. 41.7 points per game. Can you believe that? Look, sometimes NBA fans will look back at the older eras and say those players wouldn't be as good in today's NBA because they're looking at simple stats like points per game. You have to consider the percent value they were bringing to their team in those games. And yeah, for those of you who watched Kobe Bryant, this is not unbelievable. With the point inflation that's happening in today's league and the fact that he was scoring 35 back in 2006 when scoring was really low, it's a no-brainer. This makes a lot of sense. Yes, Kobe Bryant would be scoring 40 a game in today's league. From the line and an 81 point game. So please remember that rule changes matter. In fact, another rule change that might matter significantly is the implementation of artificial intelligence in refereeing. Are referees going to be replaced by robots? Is this the end of human referees in the NBA? 